Ashley, Kayla, welcome to San Francisco. Um, from the outside, it seems you two are quite different personalities. Uh, where do you see similarities and differences in how you approach racing? I'll start with you, Taylor. Similarities and differences. Oh, goodness. <laughs> well, similarities, Ashley and I have both decided to come to San Francisco this weekend. <laughs> well, that's an obvious one. <laughs> <laughs> differences, I'm a bit scattered. Ashley seems a lot more focused and prioritized, so I respect yeah. that. Wow, that's a, that's a very big compliment. Thank you. <laughs> uh. Do you have a better answer? Um, I, I'm interested to know what you guys think, how we're so different. I'm not sure how we perceive ourselves. Um, yeah, I don't know, that's an interesting question. I think that um, we're probably all very similar, um, all of the athletes on the start line in some ways, but we just go about our, different, uh, go about our business in different ways. Um, you know, Taylor might see herself as scattered, but you know, that's not how maybe some of her competitors see her. So it's interesting how we, we think we are in race week and how we behave and how that comes across to others. But I think we're all just trying to keep our cool and trying to get stuff done so we get to the start line and um, in the best shape possible. The field here this weekend, as we know, is absolutely stacked. I mean, what does the rising depth of strength in women's racing mean for women's triathlon at the moment? Yeah, I guess the whole point of the T100 Tour is to try and get the best athletes um, on the start line um, competing against each other all year long. I think we're pretty lucky to have Taylor here um, in San Francisco Cisco, because she's obviously got the Olympics coming up. So it's a really great opportunity for all of us um, to be able to race Taylor and um, an athlete of her calibre as she prepares for the Olympics. So it's, it's pretty cool that um, we've been able to assemble the field that we have here and yeah, I think it's going to be a great test, you know, on a really challenging course, which, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, we're all prepared for because I think, um, yeah, you have to be adaptable, though, because it's going to be uh, interesting. Taylor, I'll ask you the next question, just because Ash has obviously uh, already done a race this year. Who's impressed you so far this season and who's maybe surprised you as well? Well, I had this question in an interview and I said first and foremost Ashley and I think both in terms of it seems and this is just from a like outside view it seems like you've been very strategic in skipping Miami and because you've done like the WTS series you know how to race like across a long period of time versus just one or two races and that's like take strategy of what you do and what you don't do and so then you went out and you nailed Singapore and that was very impressive and I'm sure there's I'm sure you're still building in your season so. I'm excited to see what happens this weekend. Are you going with Ash as the impress? Have you got a surprise package of so of the season? There are always going to be surprises. So the fact that there is a surprise shouldn't be a surprise. Just kind of like, well, who's going to be the surprise this year? And I don't know. I feel like it's still probably too early to tell. Um, I would say I'm just very impressed that the T100 has put together such a nice schedule and getting such good athletes and like these races, like. I'm excited for the course. I don't know about you, but I was just like, wow, this is a fun course and this is a like, race to get excited about. You've raced each other twice over the 100K now, got a win each. Um, what's going to be the deciding factor this weekend? All, all the races have been pretty different. Um, yeah, I don't know what Taylor thinks about Dallas. That was obviously after some injuries of hers and obviously in conditions um, that I liked. It was hot. Um, and then Milwaukee, you know, I don't know. It was, I don't know what kind of conditions. They were just mild, they were just normal. And I guess Taylor was out and owned the whole time. I think she ended up beating me by 50 seconds, a minute, I'm not sure. But it was probably a lonely day for Taylor. Um, and I probably didn't offer her that much competition. So I guess, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see what will happen on Saturday because it's completely different conditions. Um, it's a really unique course. It's pretty cool that T100 was able to get this race in conjunction with Escape from Alcatraz because uh, yeah, it's a it's a one that has a long history and a lot of people you know wait years to be able to to compete in it. So um, I think that we'll both. I, I can't speak for Taylor, but I'll just be thinking about myself and trying to nail each discipline on the course because um, I know that there'll be lots of things that come up that I'll need to overcome to get the best out of myself. I think to answer that, like the Milwaukee and Dallas 
the difference, I think, in Dallas, I thought I was good and that I wasn't. In Milwaukee, I thought I wasn't good and that I was okay, like coming off the bike. So it's like, you just never know. And you, like, you push me to the line in both races. And so I have to be very grateful for that. But I think regardless of what happens this weekend, hopefully we're racing each other another three or four times this year in different conditions over different courses. And so it's kind of like whatever happens this weekend, great. But I hope to see you at the start line again. Yeah. I. I, I'd say the same thing. I think this is just the start of, um, you know, a few, a few battles that we'll have this year, no doubt. Um, it, it'll, be, it'll be tough, like, you know, Taylor's um, in the most incredible form. Um, and, you know, when you're a front pack swimmer, you just make the US Olympic cycling team and you can run a, what, 33 minute 10K in the world triathlon races. Um, yeah, that's, if I was Taylor, I'd be feeling pretty good about myself. So uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty cool to be able to race her as she prepa prepares for the Olympics as um, one of the favorites for the gold medal. Well, I wouldn't say that after my last race, but I was kindly 11, <laughs> so it's good. It's pretty good. <laughs> but we all get humbled and you've done this race before. And so I also don't count that out in terms of the fact that we just all have to get to shore. Yeah, we do, but you'll be leading the way. I won't be. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Does this unique course suit your strengths or will it challenge you more than most? I'll start with you, Tim. Well, I don't know about the swim. I mean, I know personally a weakness of mine that people point out is I don't take great lines. So if anyone wants to follow my feet, like I could end up in the Pacific Ocean, but we don't know, um, hopefully not. But then, yeah, I just, I think, I still haven't seen the run course, so I can't really answer the question in full, but like we'll see what happens in the weekend and I'm sure that it'll just be great regardless. I'll go to the next one. Sport talks a lot about rivalries, uh, but triathlon rivalries are more often characterized by support and respect for one another. What is it about the swim, bike, run that creates that kind of climate? Oh, that's an interesting question. I don't, I'm not sure. I think it's pretty different. There's a few people that like to talk a lot and um, you know might have really strong rivalries with people but I don't know I think it depends on who you are and I guess my nature is always just um, yeah to I guess be humble and respect my competitors and I think that's um, most of the the field uh, in triathlon it's a it's a it's a big sport and a growing sport but it's still got very like humble beginnings and a lot of it's very inclusive so I think that um, maybe there's just not that elitism around it which can create that kind of maybe you know really really big personalities but I think that um, yeah most people that do triathlon have some really interesting stories to tell they've been through hardships and um, also experienced some super big highs so I think that um, the triathlon community is yeah a really unique one a really special one but um, yeah, there's some incredibly interesting and great people within our sport. I'm sorry for smiling during that, but I was, I was actually thinking of, sorry, I'll, I'll t can I tell a story? When we're at, so in terms of like, I think triathletes are kept very humble because while we're professionals, like we train in public facilities sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so last summer I went to Scott Carpenter and Ashley was there and this woman gets into her lane and this woman has like a wide brim hat on and, <laughs> yeah. and sunglasses. Like she is not sticking her face in the water. And Ashley, you were so kind to her and like so considerate. You just went around her like every lap because you were so, so much faster than her. But like just watching that, there's some people in the sport who wouldn't just be like, so nice and so like just moving around her every <laughs> single lap <laughs> and it's like but I guess maybe that helps with some of the humility but it also speaks to who Ashley is like she's not walking onto the pool deck like do you know who I am and like just even seeing that it's like it's very refreshing and nice to see. What did you do Taylor? Did you switch lanes? I think I was in one of the lanes over but like if you go at a good time in Scott Carpenter you don't really have to share but <laughs> I saw her get in and I'm like Wow, what's gonna happen? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember that. That was that was interesting. <laughs> it does conjure up quite the picture. Um, Ash, uh, you were teetering, possibly on leaving the sport behind. Um, it would have been such a shame for the T100 from what you've since produced. What do you think it is about the T100 that has made you kind of fall back in love if you had fallen out of love with the sport again? Yeah, I think that I really enjoy, I guess, having a bit more independence and being really accountable for what I'm doing. 
Um, I guess throughout my whole career, I've been quite curious, um, even in training, like I was wondering why I was doing certain things and um, wanting to always learn. And sometimes that's hard to do in certain situations and certain, I guess, um, big group environments. But I guess now I feel like I have more freedom and independence. I can go to this kind of series and yeah, be really accountable, make some decisions. And I really enjoy that. And then T100 kind of brings us all together and um, I'm able to still race against the best athletes in the world. And I think that's what really gets me out of bed each day, knowing that um, I have to better myself because there's, you know, all these other middle distance and long distance athletes that are, um, yeah, ready to take the start line and I have to keep on evolving and um, being better myself. Uh, some of the athletes have chosen for different reasons to sit out the first two races, um, meaning they have to do either six or in Taylor's case, just four. Uh, do you think you're in a better position because you've already gone out there and won one? Yeah, I guess it's always nice when you can do your first race and, and win it, of course. But, you know, like Taylor said, it is a really long season, but um, we are both accustomed to racing over a long period of time at the highest level. So um, obviously I'm Australian and I'm based in Australia. So I had to make um, decisions at the start of the year where I didn't think I was going to be ready for Miami. I wouldn't don't, didn't think I would be able to yeah, be at my best. And also um, East Coast America from Australia is pretty challenging. So I tried to make sure I picked my battles and Singapore's easy um, conditions and course that I loved. And then I kind of felt like, okay, I'll start my season there and then try and hit, hit the T100 tour from then on in. So yeah, you've got to be smart about it, but I'm also excited that I can go to each race and challenge myself over really different courses, um, continents and conditions. Uh, Taylor, would you say that Ash is at an advantage with the fact that she's just focusing on T100 while you're balancing Olympics and this? Well, I don't know advantage. I mean, it depends on, I don't know what her goals are for the year and what my goals, I know my goals, I don't know her goals. <laughs> and so, um, but I do know that she has her spot for 70.3 Worlds as well. And so, I'm guessing that she might race that. I don't know if she has to decide yet, but it's like, it might be a priority, but like at some times having different things, like I'm refreshed and I'm very excited to be here. And so not that you're not, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like every race I do is like really special and exciting because I don't always get to do it. And so like, I guess whatever excites and motivates each athlete. And as Ashley was saying, like, I think it's kind of figuring out what you need as an athlete and like, just doing what's best for you. Ash, is it daunting having Taylor on the start line? And can she be beaten? Yeah, of course. Like Taylor Nib is one of the best triathletes we've seen in a very, very long time. Um, the, the talent that Taylor has is just absolutely incredible. And um, yeah, I, yeah, of course, there's a, there's a sense that, you know, when Taylor's there, it's going gonna, it's gonna to change the race because, um, you're so, you're so good. <laughs> but I, I think that you can have a lot of respect for your competitors, but it doesn't mean that I think that Taylor is unbeatable. Of course, I think that on Saturday, she's going to be very, very hard to beat, but that doesn't mean that, you know, my, my year's just done. I have to um, always make sure that when Taylor is on the start line, I'm at my very best to try and be the best competitor I can be. And I guess say that everyone is out to beat you. How much added pressure does that, if any, put on you? Because I know you talk about just your excitement to race and to be here. Well, this is again the second time today I'm hearing this and it's like, Ashley's won. I think you're number one in this race. Like I'm number 10, I'm in the back. So I don't like... think that matters. Like the numbers, they do not matter, Taylor, come on. But, oh but it's God. like the swim, everyone could come out in different positions. It'll be a whole shake up. And it's like, at the end of the day, you just like have to put your best foot forward. And so like, yes, everyone, I'm just, I'm excited to race but I think everyone's beatable. Ash, with, uh, with more 100K wins than anyone else, you've been dubbed as the queen of the T100. Can you see yourself at the top of the standings at the end of the season? Oh, it'd be nice to be at the top of the, top of the standings, of course. But um, 
who knows what's going to happen. Three races count plus the grand final. There's a lot of racing to happen before we decide that. But yeah, I've got one on the ball with Singapore. So yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Taylor, you've spoken about the fact that you've got, we've got Jan commentating as well. He's been picking apart everyone's races. Um, are you excited for him to kind of pick you apart out there or nervous about what maybe he'll have to say? Oh, well, I'm, I'm excited. I mean, like if anyone's met me or knows me very well, I think I'll probably do it better. I can pick myself apart very well. So anyone, I, I wouldn't want anyone to read my race recaps, but I will write race recaps and that's, so I'm excited. It's always good to get like an honest opinion, but it's also sometimes what you don't want to hear is the thing that you need to hear most. And so even if it's like more painful or you don't want to hear that in the moment, like you got to listen to that and it's like, okay, actually this might be what you need in that moment and it'll help you more in a week or a month or a year's time. Final question, Ash, is for you. Um, the last time you won the individual world championship was as a junior in 2010. What would it mean to you to become the first T100 world champion? Ignore that Taylor's there because she might be one of your fiercest competitor 14 years later. Yeah, I guess that would be a dream come true. I guess that would probably, um, yeah, just be the absolute highlight of, I guess, a 14 year career in between that first world title, I guess. It's, it's not gonna be easy, but um, yeah, I guess that is at the back of my mind because I've, I've won some races, I've been in some mixed team relay successes, but I've never had a world title since then. So that was a very long time ago. Uh, and Taylor, for you, you could do what no one's done before. You could be an Olympic champion and a T100 world champion. That'd be rewriting history. Yes, well, that's because it's the first year of it happening. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's, that just seems like it's absolutely impossible. So one would be great. I, I'd take one this year. That'd be fantastic. Thank you very much for answering those questions. Good luck on Saturday. We hope it's an epic battle. Thanks.